Hey, Raven here. Just sitting here by a fire on a nice cool North Carolina day in a nice little wooded setting here. It's a great morning. I just there been thinking the last few days about a subject of just the relevance of God, you know, and I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but the you know how how relevant is God to you? Is he just a religious figure? Is he just something you pull down from a shelf and wind up on Sundays? You know, is he like a quicksand Jesus, as I've heard him called, where you just, when you get in trouble and you don't have anywhere else to turn, then you turn to him? Uh, you know, the, I've heard a lot of different definitions, you know, and, and the way people treat God and, you know, but, but uh, and, you know, in, in some ways, I'm, I'm sure it's difficult for some people because God doesn't uh, appear in a tangible form and usually, and uh, he did back in the Old Testament days, and I'm not saying he couldn't now, but but for the most part, uh, you know, it's probably not going to happen. And that's why he tells us to walk by faith, not by sight. And, uh, you know, faith, what does the Bible say faith is? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, you can like see the, you can't see the wind, but you, you can feel the effects of the wind. Uh, you can, you know, there's there's evidence of, of God and the creator, I think, you know, when you, especially when you get out in nature, you see a lot of, uh, you see these big, beautiful trees and you even seeing a fire burning or, you know, or just uh, having a good day. I mean, that, you know, that's, that, that shows me, I mean, that, that, that there's a God. And uh, same with, you know, thinking about the, the, the complexity of the human body and other things, just how complex it is. It had to, to me, it had to be a designer. I can't understand atheists that just say there is no God completely. Of course, the Bible says in Psalm 14 that the fool has said in his heart there's no God. So I don't see how you couldn't say. You know, it's like, you know, you go find a, a watch on the beach or something like that. You don't pick it up and say, oh, look, this watch evolved here. You know, you know there's a designer to it. And you got something as complex as a human body. Then, then people say, well, we just evolved all through a process of primordial soup up through some monkeys and became humans, you know. But that's just, you know, ridiculous to me. It takes more faith to me, I think, to believe in evolution than to believe in science and believe in, in than to believe in God. You know, I believe there's a creator. It really is. I mean, you know, in true science and you know, would would confirm the things that, that the Bible says. I think, you know, because uh the Bible talks about about the earth being round, it talks about life being in the blood, uh, talks about lots of different things, you know, in nature and stuff that, that were long before there was any science to confirm them. You know, so I find that interesting. But, you know, what about, you know, how relevant God is to you? Uh, you know, he, he should be relevant in everything that you do. He should come alongside everything that you do. He's omnipresent. He's all around you at all times, in all places. And yet, you know, but yet we don't acknowledge him. We don't see him. All we focus on, and I'm guilty of it too, we focus on our own aches and pains and our own problems and things like that. You know, we don't take time to really just nurture the presence of God around us, you know, and acknowledge that. You know, that that's just so important. It, it, unfortunately, it don't come natural. I don't know if it's due to the fall of man in the Garden of Eden or what, but, but for whatever reason, even... Even, you know, people that claim to be Christians, uh, you know, they don't have, they, they still have trouble and struggle with you know, with, uh, with nurturing the presence of God. You know, you ask them, they'll say, you know, yeah, I believe in God, you know, but, you know, let something terrible happen and come along their way, sickness or, you know, or, or someone die or, you know, or do you lose a job or something like that, you know, then, then all of a sudden God's gotten, you know, you're crying out to God, help me, help me. And then when he doesn't help you sometimes, it doesn't seem like he does because he doesn't often help you immediately. He can, and I have no plenty of instances where, where there have been miracles performed. You know, but if even if that doesn't happen, is he still going to be relevant to you? Or are you going to be mad at him, you know, because he didn't give you what you wanted? I mean, you got to think about, you know, he's got to be relevant in everything that you do. It's like, you know, when you do your bills and pay your bills, he's got to, you know, when you, when you're sitting and enjoying a good day and when you're in pain and having a bad day, then, you know, you still got to believe in God. I mean, when I had cancer, it was, uh, it, you know, I couldn't have got through it without God, I don't think, because he gave me a supernatural peace 
in me that he was with me through it all. He could have healed me completely, you know, but, uh, but I had to, I had to do some suffering through it and, uh, had chemo treatments and, you know, those were no fun at all. Uh, I, but I, but I see the miracles of God in it though. I wasn't ever throwing up sick and, uh, you know, so, I mean, I got through it, you know, pretty good. I mean, I've got some, still got some effects from it. I'm 68 years old and between old age and cancer, I mean, I, my body don't do like it, want, like I want it to do, you know, so it really limits me a lot on what I want to do and what I can do, you know, but, but he's relevant to me. I, I, I feel his presence and just sitting out here, even among these trees, I feel his presence everywhere I go, but it's something you have to nurture. It don't come natural. It's something you've got to nurture. You got to, when you walk into a room, you've got to understand that the Holy Spirit is in you. I feel like the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me one time, even going to, when I worked at Walmart for a while and I looked, went in the break room and everybody got real quiet, you know? And I mean, I wasn't a controversial figure or, or popular or any reason for everybody to get real quiet, you know, but, uh, but they got real quiet. And I feel like the Lord spoke to me and said, said every demon in that room got quiet and they, and they, it's not, you know, it's your presence. They knew the Holy Spirit in you was going to, could cause them problems. But most people, when they walk into a room, they don't realize that, that demons tremble and that they, that they're, that they're afraid. But most of the time they take comfort in the fact that, that, that people don't do nothing. I mean, we should walk in that room, you know, with a difference. We should walk in there and be friendly and nice and all that. But under our breath, we need to be praying and binding evil spirits and praying for the people in the room that God will meet their needs. You know, God's relevance, you know, it carries over into everything that you do. He's got to, I mean, it, you know, it should affect the, there's not no time where that's like, it's your time. And then there's God's time. You know, that's not, that's not what a relationship is about. You know, you don't just like with your wife, you know, you don't, how long would your marriage last if you, if you just, you know, took her that, took her and was nice to her when you needed her or need something from her or something, you know, or, you know, it, it, it's, it, and a lot of people treat, but a lot of people treat their relationship with God that way. And, uh, and they say they have a relationship with God, but they really don't. I mean, God's listening. He's, you know, he's uh, the whole time that you're, whether you're, you know, he's looking over you even when you're asleep, you know, I, I just believe he's relevant. I, I, and it, it's such a beautiful life that you can have even going through stuff. You know, if you see God in it and just realize that he's there with you, he'll be with you even to take that final step through death door and into eternity so it's so important that we we miss out on so much i think you know when we don't acknowledge his presence and when we don't nurture his presence and 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 have an awareness of god all around us you know i mean you should be you know i i, I love camping i love nature and and there's so many things when i look in and watch even a you know a tiny little lizard you know crawling or you know or i hear the sound of the water rolling over the rocks, you know, it's such a beautiful sound of wind and the trees, you know, all those things that, that, that a lot of people just take for granted. And, you know, they're, uh, I don't take them for granted. I see God in it. You know, I wrote a book one time that's still out on, on the market on Amazon. If you want to read it, fire, fire, water, earth, air. And I just talk about, you know, seeing God in nature because it's his creation. You know, we use the word nature and we understand what that means. Nothing wrong with using that word, you know, but, but technically it is his creation that we're looking at. And if we would realize that, then he's going to, he will show us things. He'll reveal things to us. You know, I thought I make a, I teach primitive survival skills or I used to pretty heavily in the eighties and nineties, that uh, I still am skilled, but I remember even making pottery. I would fire it in the fire like uh, the Catawba Indians did. And uh, you know, and, and there's so many lessons that you can see just from that. I mean, whenever, cause life turns up the heat sometime. You know, and the, the things that we go through, the problems we go through, that, well, you know, whether we're fighting cancer or whether we're, you know, or just trying to pay the bills or we're struggling, you know, with our kids, you know, in some way that they're, because they're not living right and they're getting in trouble and they're giving us a hard time. It's trying to stress us out. We got to not let the, the enemy get to us in those things. And we got to acknowledge God in them because he's there. He's never not there. It's not, when you see things bad happening, it doesn't, it isn't evidence that God's not there anymore. It's all the more evidence that he is with you because he's going to walk you through that. And I think a lot of uh, the way that you go through things and the way you deal with things is, is probably more of a witness than people than, 
than just you know trying to preach them to death and preach them down. We you know it's more if we it's more important to live the life before people. That's ones that's how you can really see God in things and you let people see God in you. Because like somebody said, uh, the, you might be the only Bible some people read. And I think that's probably true. Some people never actually pick up the Bible, but you know maybe part of the reason is because they see somebody that is not living a life that claims to be a Christian or whatever. You know, but uh, you know you you can you can live by just your life. Just, your life just be a witness. You know, that's the main thing. Because if you're the way you deal with stuff and the way you line up, you know, with uh, with 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 the problems of the world and problems your personal problems, you know, it's got a lot to do and will say a lot about who you are. In fact, you find out who you are. Um, I love the analogy someone uh, said one time of a sponge. You know, a sponge only absorbs whatever whatever you put it in and whatever you expose it to. You might want to soak up a spill or something or, or water like that. And if water's dirty, then that's the water in the sponge is dirty. You know, so and it, it's and but then when you squeeze that sponge to get the water out of it, then you see what's in it. You see the dirty water coming out or whatever's in it. You know, and uh, and that's the same with us. When we get squeezed in life, we find out what we're really made of. We find out what's really in us. You know, that's why it's so important that we fill ourselves with faith and in the and the Holy Spirit and and fill ourselves with the Word of God. You know, because when we do that, then that's what's going to be in us. And when the devil or life squeezes us, then he's going. It's going. That's what's going to come out of us. You know, I jokingly heard somebody say, "I want to be so full of the Holy Spirit that that the uh, mosquito bite me, he'll go away singing the There's power in the blood." <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny, but there's a there's some truth to that. You know, it's a, you know, whenever life comes against you and and things start happening, you know, that's that, that if if you've really prepared yourself. And, and to that, and got to that place, you know, where you trust God, you know, then bad news even is going to cause you to still trust in God and to still praise Him, you know, and, I, and that's that shows what's in you, you know, that's what you put in you in advance. Uh, David said, "I put, I've, I've hidden Thy word in my heart that I might not sin against God," but it wasn't until He hid the word in His heart that it had an effect, that it had power. You know, and that's that's so true. You know, because I mean, people walk around all the time saying, "I've heard all my life." You know, the Bible is the sword of the spirit, but the Bible, the, the printed Bible, is not the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is when you is when you read that Bible and it and it becomes revelation knowledge to you. It it reads you. You know, it shows you things about yourself. It, you you find out some truth in there that you just like, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And something really you can acknowledge and that you can identify with. There's a Greek word for that called rhema, you know, which is to reveal the word of God. That's when it becomes, so the Bible is more like a store, like a storehouse for the swords. It's not the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit's good. You got to get what's in your, get it in your spirit for it to be a powerful sword that can be used against the enemy. You know, so there's, you know, so, you know, think about this if you would, and just, just how relevant is God to you? You know, don't let him just be like, say, a, a, something you think you can wind up on. That's not God at all. You can't just wind him up on Sunday and then live like you know, like you want the rest of the week. And this is not a guilt trip. It's just saying that if you're if you're live, not living any different than anybody else, and and uh, you know, and you're living differently on Sunday than you are on the rest of the week, then you've already you know you've got some spiritual problems anyway. You may not even be saved, you know. So anyway, something to think about. Uh, you know, um, you know, even in in other philosophies and. And religions and stuff, there's something called mindfulness, and I, and you know we want to, a lot of times Christians want to turn that away, you know, because it's maybe a, a Buddhist concept or something. But it's not a Buddhist concept. It's just because they acknowledge it and make it part of their, they wisely make it part of their disciplines, you know, does not mean that that doesn't apply to a Christian too, because mindfulness is just basically an awareness of everything around you, a spatial, not just a spatial awareness, but but you know just a just an acknowledgement of where you are and what you're looking at. You know, don't just look at the forest and not see the trees. You know, take time to smell the roses, as they say. You know, take time to acknowledge everything, you know, that that even a cat, you know, wanting to play or something like that. I mean, that's an, acknowledge that. That's mindfulness. It's being aware. You, in fact, you can calm yourself down from an anxiety attack greatly if you just take time to even look at an object and just 
think about that instead of what you're going through, you know, think about every detail of it. Look at that rose and look at the petals on it. Look at the thorns on it. You know, look at all these, notice all these different things. It helps your mind to focus on the right things instead of wrong things. So anyway, that's just a few thoughts that I had on relevance and I might be sharing some more. And I hope you enjoyed this and uh, share this video with others if you would. And maybe it'll help them too. I've got other videos also on uh, my YouTube channel called Lessons Learned. So look for Lessons Learned by Benjamin Raven Presley. All right, you have a good day.